Tonight, we are digging into the tax cut debate in Oklahoma as lawmakers prepare to head back to the Capitol tomorrow. They'll be gaveling into the second special session this year to address the governor's call for tax cuts. We spoke to the governor in an exclusive interview to ask about his plan, but first, Fox 25's Capitol reporter Peyton May breaking down what we can expect at the Capitol tomorrow. The governor has called both the House and the Senate into special session on tax reform before. Last time didn't bring results, and now the chambers have completely different plans. I hope he didn't just put out a call without a plan. Uh, if, if that's true, then it's going to be a colossal failure. The president pro tem of the Senate and the Speaker of the House both plan to respond to the call and gavel in tomorrow. The House is ready to move full steam ahead with cutting taxes. I hope that we'll have an agreement and a package of uh, bills um, ready to, to introduce on October the 3rd. Speaker McCall has already filed a handful of shell bills and doesn't think the House will have an issue passing a cut. We've passed multiple tax cutting measures for the last four sessions. The Senate will also gavel in, but then head straight to an appropriations and budget committee meeting where they've requested the governor's attendance. We look forward to the governor hopefully uh, answering our call. I think all four million Oklahomans deserve to hear what his real plan is. The governor hasn't confirmed if he'll be there, but the agenda includes an update by the fiscal staff of the Senate, the state treasurer, OMES, and the tax commission. All three parties, the governor and House and Senate leadership, want the same policy. I think Oklahoma should strive to eliminate the personal income tax in the state over time. The issue, though, is the multi-billion dollar impact to the state's tax revenue. How do we get to our shared goal of trying to lower the income tax and eventually eliminate it without uh, jeopardizing critical services. Another question hanging in the balance, can they even get a tax cut done during special session? There's no timeline on how long they'll be in the chambers, but it takes at least five days for a bill to make it across the finish line. Reporting at the Capitol, I'm Peyton May. House Democrats have filed three tax relief bills for the upcoming special session. Those bills include one to eliminate the state sales tax on groceries, another to expand the earned income tax credit, and a third to increase sales tax credits for lower income families. Democrats say these bills would provide relief for working families and everyday Oklahomans. The governor's call to cut state income taxes comes as we sit on the largest savings balance in state history at $5.4 billion. But as you just heard, even some members of his own party are raising concerns. I sat down with the governor in an exclusive interview to talk about his plan and his political future. There's nothing vague about a tax cut. Governor Stitt barks back at critics, including Senate leadership, who say his goal of ultimately eliminating state income tax lacks a plan. Right now, Oklahoma brings in around $4 billion a year through income taxes. So the folks that are saying, I need a plan for how you're going to make up these billions of dollars, you're saying you don't need one. There is no billions of dollars. I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, we're not suggesting cutting down a quarter of a point cut is about $80 million the first year, and it's about 240 after that, okay? So as long as you don't cut below 200, cut more than a billion dollars, we're perfectly fine on the expense side. We're going to be able to fund government, no problem. He insists this isn't about cutting spending, rather slowing the growth of government. Stitt believes the state only needs $3.7 billion in savings to weather an economic downturn without cutting core services. That's far less than the $5.4 billion in the bank now. Always going to make sure we can fund our education and law enforcement. I gave law enforcement a huge raise. But what do we do with that billion dollars extra? We give it back to the taxpayer. Folks have said with all this surplus, there are so many areas in Oklahoma where we do fall behind or we're in the bottom of 10. I mean, we are ranked eighth poorest in the country, 50th in education, worst in the nation for domestic violence, 11 worst for maternal mortality, 43rd worst to raise a family, 46th overall child well-being, worst state for women, 45th country uh, in the country for overall health, 50th in uninsured adults. Do we not need to spend money in these areas? Well, first off, I, I don't believe that government spending, passing a law in Oklahoma City fixes some of these social issues. Uh, I believe this starts at home and the family. It starts in education. It start, starts with strong families. It starts with neighbors being neighbors. So I don't know where you're getting those stats, but I do know that Oklahoma is top 10 and people moving to our state. Uh, our economy and our unemployment is the lowest it's ever been. Our bridge conditions are number five in the country. The governor touts his successes in improving Oklahoma, while many speculate on his aspirations for higher office. 
is there anything that would make you leave your second term early? Any administration or any job that would make you say, okay, I got to step down from governor? You know, I, I doubt it. I love being governor. I love, this is, this, is, this is my state where my family lives and my great grandparents and my grandparents. So you say you doubt you'd leave. There's a t small chance, you never say never. Here's the deal, if, if, if the President of the United States calls you and asks you to do something, you, it. You, you would obviously consider it. Stick came out early to endorse Ron DeSantis in his bid for the Republican nomination for president. The Florida governor has since fallen in the polls with former President Trump dominating the crowded race even as he faces four separate indictments. Is there any chance that you would shift your support to a candidate who might have a better chance of winning the presidency? Here's the deal. I mean, we're a long ways from Iowa, and, mm -hmm. and I believe that DeSantis still has a good shot. Whoever wins the Republican nominee, I'm going to be 100% supportive of. President Trump did some good things, and if he wins it, we're going to be backing him to win. What if he gets convicted of a felony? What if he is found guilty? Should the Republicans block him from taking that nomination? Nobody is above the law. So if he did something wrong, he needs to be held accountable. But I, we think it's very odd that these district attorneys around the country are indicting a former president of the United States. It's unprecedented. So I don't think he's going to be convicted of anything. But if he is. We'll see what it is. We'll see what type of sham trial that was. Back in Oklahoma and well into his second term, Governor Stitt faces a hurdle working with a supermajority that isn't always friendly to his agenda. What he can accomplish in this special session and beyond remains up in the air. I'm going to keep being bold, telling Oklahomans the truth. And then again, but it's up to the legislature to pass it or not. I don't lose any sleep over it. Uh, I'm going to keep leading and, 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 and being hopeful that they'll do the right thing. Nine states, including Tennessee, Florida, and Texas, have zero income tax, which is what Governor Stitt aspires for Oklahoma. You can watch much more from my exclusive interview with the governor on OKCFox.com. And I've also linked all the reports showing Oklahoma's standings in the bottom 10 that I referenced in our conversation. So how much exactly do Oklahomans currently pay in income taxes and how much revenue does it bring in? Oklahoma has a personal income tax rate ranging from 0.25% to 4.75%. According to the Oklahoma Tax Commission, it brought in $5.7 billion to the state in the 2021-2022 tax year. And of that amount, over $800 million was refunded, leaving the state with a net income tax revenue of over $4.5 nine billion dollars. This isn't the first time Oklahoma's proposed an income tax cut. Former Governor Mary Fallon actually signed a measure into law to cut Oklahoma's top personal income tax. That rate went from 5.25% to 5% on January 1st of 2015. Now, Oklahoma faced major budget shortfalls in 2015, 16, and 17, causing services to be cut and state fees to rise. Senate President Pro Tem Greg Treat says it's for that reason we have to be careful when making a decision on tax cuts. I've lived through a $600 million shortfall, an $800 million shortfall, and a $1.3 billion shortfall. We're living in good times right now. We have a surplus, but we have a surplus because we've intentionally underspent for the last five years. We've intentionally spent less than we have to build up a savings account, to build up revenue, to be able to do things like investments in public education, like giving parental choice on school choice, investing in health care, investing in roads. I don't want to undercut any of those advancements. We also spoke with economist Travis Roach, who says bringing the state income tax to zero will not just slow the growth of government, it will defund it. It's a terrible idea. Um, it's It would defund our government and all the core services that a government is supposed to provide. Roach says bringing the state income tax to zero would affect businesses' ability to function and operate. Governor Kevin Stitt will hold a press conference in the Capitol Blue Room tomorrow at 930 regarding his call for the special legislative session. And that was your Big Story Breakdown. You can find more on tomorrow's special session and the push for tax cuts on OKCFox.com.